Hi everyone and welcome back for another uh, short clip of palliative education. And today what we're going to be talking about is uh, combination products of opioid and naloxone. Um, and these are products that were seen increasingly prescribed and it's important to know um, why we use them, how they work and particularly some of the uh, pitfalls that can come from prescribing these products. So first of all, as the name would suggest, these are products that uh, contain some opioid for analgesia, but they're also combined with oral naloxone. And the reason that these products are made like that is that they're marketed to try and overcome one of the big problems that we see with analgesic use and indeed in palliative care patients and that's opioid induced constipation. Now the way that these products work um, is quite clever. Essentially the opioid and the naloxone are combined in an oral preparation. Um, when the patient takes that um, it's absorbed into the digestive tract and the way that they stop uh, patients becoming constipated is that the naloxone acts um, it, to counteract the opioid on the opioid receptors in the gut. And so because those receptors are blocked by the naloxone, the opioid doesn't have its effect in the gut, uh, which means that you don't get the the opioid induced side effects of the constipation. Those drugs are then absorbed and they undergo metabolism in the liver. Now the opioid then gets uh, through the liver and is able to have its systemic effect, but the naloxone undergoes extensive first pass metabolism, gets broken down the majority of it, and so you don't get the systemic absorption of the naloxone which is why you manage to stop the effect in the gut, but you don't counteract the analgesia systemically. So it's a very neat idea to try and overcome quite a big problem that we see as clinicians. However, like any drug product, there are some nuances that you need to be aware of, some things that can trip you up, um, and you need to just be aware of the pitfalls. So what are the issues that you need to be aware of? Well, the first issue that people often come across is that they actually overestimate um, the opioid-induced constipation component um, that patients are suffering from. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, essentially, Opioids aren't the only reason why our patients get constipated. Um, there's multiple reasons in palliative care patients. There's other drugs that can cause constipation. Things like um, uh, amitriptyline, for instance. Um, so other drugs that patients can be taking. Reduced oral intake. Um, that's a big factor as well. We know that sort of maintaining fluid balance is important in preventing constipation, and that's a big issue for our patients, as is reduced mobility. So, for palliative care patients, it's not just the opioid. That's a big contributing factor, but it's not the only thing. So actually, putting patients on a drug that just counteracts one of the provoking factors uh, for constipation doesn't solve the entire problem. So often these drugs get prescribed thinking that well, we won't need to prescribe any laxatives anymore, but actually most patients who are on these types of um, drugs still need to have laxatives and probably still need to have quite intensive bowel management. So first thing to remember is just because you're using a combination of an opioid and naloxone doesn't mean that you don't have to think about the patient's bowel management and doesn't mean that you're not gonna to need to prescribe laxatives. So that, that's the first important potential pitfall that you need to be aware of. Now the other pitfall that sometimes um, catches people out 
is actually the, the potency of the opioid. Now, in most of these preparations, the opioid that's actually being used is oxycodone. Now, oxycodone is an opioid that's been around for a long time now. It's been very frequently uh, used and researched in palliative care. But it is quite a potent opioid. And depending upon sort of which conversion factor you use, some people say it's one and a half times as potent as morphine. Some people say it's twice as potent as morphine. But it is significantly more potent than morphine. And sometimes people are prescribing these products not fully aware of how potent the drug is that they're prescribing. And you'll see patients being escalated on this dose and the background analgesia being increased and increased and increased. Until if you actually did the opioid conversion and went back to sort of oral morphine equivalent, there are quite high doses and still being under generalist care rather than being referred to a specialist. And certainly I've seen patients who have been incremented up to sort of big doses of, of these combination products where they're, they're taking 60, 80 milligrams of oxycodone twice a day. That's the equivalent of almost 250 milligrams of morphine a day and still hasn't been recognised that this patient has really quite difficult to manage pain and really should have been referred on to a specialist earlier. So just because it's a more potent opioid and the, the number of milligrams that you're prescribing might seem a little bit more reassuring, really we've just got to be careful about that potency issue with these drugs. Now the other issue really arises from, from the pharmacokinetics of the combination. Now you might remember that I said that part of the trick to how these drugs work is that the naloxone component goes through the liver and gets extensively, metastas uh, extensively um, metabolized and broken down so that you don't get any systemic absorption. Now that's okay if you've got a healthy liver, but if you've got liver disease of really any description, but particularly in palliative care patients where we know that they get liver metastases, not uncommonly, this can be a particular issue. Now, if you've got a dysfunctional liver and that metabolism of the naloxone doesn't happen as we would expect, then you start to get systemic absorption of the naloxone, which then starts to counteract the analgesic effect centrally. So that's something that we don't want to happen. So you've got to be really, really careful about using this drug if there's a risk that your patient might develop liver dysfunction. And there's, there's a number of reasons why that might happen, not just liver metastases, but you know, if you've got a patient who's got a pancreatic carcinoma where they might develop um, obstructive liver dysfunction. Again, you want to be very careful about using these products. Now, the final pick for is something that's a little bit contentious, but um, again, it comes back to this idea that we're really relying on there being no systemic absorption of naloxone. And there is some increasing debate about whether is you escalate the doses on these products, you do get some systemic absorption. Now, there's not been a lot of research done on this, um, and a lot of the evidence is, is really um, just based on sort of observations. Um, but certainly, it's something that I've seen in my practice, um, of seeing patients who come in on these combination products um, their analgesia just really isn't that effective. Um, they've been escalated in terms of their dosage. Um, we're not winning in terms of, of getting good symptom control. And you want to do an opioid switch. Um, and often what I'll do is if the patient's not had morphine before, I'll switch them on to the morphine. 
And actually when we do that switch, what I'm increasingly seeing is a number of patients where um, you do the opioid conversion and actually you get a surprise that the patient suddenly becomes opioid toxic, even at levels of opioid which are quite conservative um, if all of the opioid that they had been on in combination with the naloxone was being absorbed and used. So I think we do see issues, particularly with patients who are coming in on high doses of these products, where I think you have to consider the possibility that there may have been some systemic absorption. And if you're gonna do an opioid conversion and you wanna do it safely, you might have to be a bit more conservative in your dosing. Certainly what I'm doing increasingly is actually admitting patients. Um, if I've got worries that there might be a significant um, adverse reaction to an opioid switch if they've been on high doses of these products. So you just need to be mindful of that and, and adjust your dosing accordingly. So I hope that's been helpful. Uh, I hope that's kind of uh, helped you to understand some of the pitfalls around these products. And uh, I look forward to seeing you for a, another short clip of palliative education in the future.